Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter number 11. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to read the foundational scripture for our theme for 2019, setting things in order. Hebrews 11 and 3 says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, God framed, he set in order the universe, the seen and the unseen world. By faith, God spoke the word and he set things in order. Yeah. You say amen. amen. God is a God of order. Now I want you to look down at verse number six of this same chapter because today we're going to start a new mini-series entitled The Priority of Faith. The priority of faith. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let me say it again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Amen. The priority of faith is the title of this mini-series and we want to remember what this word priority means. If you remember, we gave a definition of it uh, earlier this year. Priority means precedence especially established by order of importance or urgency. It means the right to precede others in order, an authoritative rating that establishes such precedence, a preceding or coming earlier in time, or something afforded or deserving prior attention. The priority of faith. Faith has to be a priority in the life of every believer. Now let me say this, because I'm laying foundation for what this series is going to be about. I'm just going to lay the foundation today. And I pray that you all pay attention to what we're going to be teaching in this series. Because as I've said before, oftentimes, Oftentimes, people think that, or may feel like what we're teaching, I don't need that right now. But I guarantee you, one day in your life, you're going to need this. You're going to need it. Because we go through seasons in life. And if you have what you need to go through that season spiritually, you'll be all right. But if you fall asleep, while this message is going forth, and these messages are going forth, and you sleep through it, you're going to miss it. If you're on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter and doing stuff that don't have anything to do with the word, you're going to miss it. One day, you're going to need this. That goes for the young as well as the old. Can you say amen? Now, so as we read this text, the Hebrew writer tells us that it is impossible to please God without faith. We cannot, we cannot please him without faith. And he also tells us that whoever comes to God must believe that God is, that he exists. And that he rewards those who diligently are earnestly seek him. Now let's break all this down. Because first of all, uh, let's look at verse number one of this chapter. And it says in verse number one, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith was a foundational component of Judaism in the Old Testament and post-biblical Judaism. 
Faith had to do with a posture of obedience, faithfulness to the covenant of God, and closely related to trusting in God. And Greek philosophers often understood faith to be an inferior way of thinking that is just mere belief. And yet for the Jews of ancient Greco-Roman society, faith continued to be a key to relationships with God and was called the queen of virtues. In Hebrews, the author defines faith as being sure of what we hope for. Now this is from the NIV translation. It's sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Uh, in this King James or New King James translation, it uses the word substance. Uh, that's the Greek word hypostasis, and it means being sure. And it is in fact a noun with a range of meanings, including substance and firmness and confidence and guarantee or proof. Given the example of, of the chapter 11 here, the definition can be translated as faith is firm confidence. Since the examples listed have a, a resolute confidence in the unseen God. So when we talk about having faith in God, we're simply talking about having a firm confidence. We're talking about having a guaranteed confidence that even though I may not see the promise, I know that God will fulfill that promise. All right. Give you another example. I may not have ever seen God, but I know that God exists. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen. So let's, let's keep going with this because the the text tells us that we cannot please him. We cannot please him. It is impossible to please God uh, without this faith, this firm confidence, this guarantee, this proof. Verse number five of this same chapter tells us that Enoch pleased God by his faith. And he was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch was translated to heaven without physical death because he pleased God. By taking him, how did he please God? By taking God and his word and living his life accordingly. Essentially, that's what walking by faith is. Taking God and his word and living our lives accordingly. Take God and his word and live life accordingly. If God said it, that settles it. Yeah. Uh, there was a saying or a song that used to be out. If God said it, I believe it, that settles it. No, if God said it, that settles it. Can I get an amen? amen. If he said it, that settles it. Now when you read verse number 7 of this same chapter, you'll see that Noah took God in his word as well. Look at verse number 7 in, in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, by faith Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. So when you read the story of Noah, you'll see where the whole world had become corrupt and God made preparations to destroy all mankind. He gave Noah instructions to build an ark to take uh, a pair of each animal and bring them on to that ark because he was going to send rain. Now when you read the story, you know, Noah it took him a long time to build that ark. But here's the thing about it. God was going to destroy the earth with rain. 
but it had never rained before. How did God water the earth? Chapter 2 of Genesis talked about how the springs of water would come up out of the ground and, and water the earth. And that would be a mist that would go up from the earth into the heavens. But it had never rained. So Noah had never seen any rain before, but God says, listen, I'm going to send some rain and I'm going to destroy the whole earth. So Noah had to take God at his word and be let off. Can I get an amen? And Peter talks about how Noah was a preacher of righteousness. So he had to preach and tell the people, listen, he had one message that he preached for 120 years. It's going to rain. Y'all hear me? It's going to rain. So you better get your soul right. Because it's going to rain. And so, you know, Jesus talked about how in the end times it's going to be just like in the days of Noah. People would be marrying and giving away in marriage and all that kind of thing. And going on about their business and not paying attention to what the preacher is saying. Yeah. And so the people were not paying attention to Noah. And then one day... God told Noah, you know, all right, get your family on in there. And the door of the ark was closed and the rains began to come. And then the waters, the spring waters began to flood the earth. And for 40 days and for 40 nights, it rained. It rained. And everything that was inside of that ark lived and everything on the outside of the ark died. Can I get an amen? Had Noah ignored God, he and his family would have died. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So he took God at his word. And essentially, that's what walking by faith is. That's what living a life of faith is. Is taking God at his word. And just living your life accordingly. Yeah. Write this verse down. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. The end part of that verse says, Whatever is not of faith is sin. It is impossible. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And whatever is not of faith is sin. So, so remember, we cannot please God without faith. And when something goes against your convictions and when it causes you to feel guilty or you have uh, an uneasiness in your conscience about it, and you shouldn't do it. And when God shows us that something is wrong, we should avoid it. God will never tell you to do something that goes against his word. Amen. Now, he may tell you to do something that may not make sense to you. But he'll never tell you to do something that goes against his word. And so when you are convicted by something, it should always be based upon his truth. Now, here's the next thing I want to tell us. The text goes on to state, for he who comes to God must believe that he is. Yeah. The person who comes to God must believe two things. He must believe in God, that God is, that God exists. The words must believe uh, in the Greek, pestue, pestuse, day means necessary and essential, absolutely necessary and essential. A.T. Robinson says, it is a moral necessity to have faith. The very existence of God is a matter of intelligent faith so that men are left without excuse. Yeah. So God, a, a person, mother, must look at the worlds, heaven and earth, and at himself, and at the existence, design, order, and the end of all things, and believe in God. A person must look at the Word of God, the Bible, and believe in God. A person must look at Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, who reveals God to man and believe in God. So, so a person must believe that he is, but he also must believe that he rewards those who diligently seek him. The word rewards. Mistap on otes in the Greek, and it means a remunerator. Yeah. What in the world is a remunerator? <laughs> a remunerator is, it means to pay a person a suitable equivalent in return for goods provided, 
services rendered or losses incurred, recompense. It means to compensate for, to make payment for. Now listen to this. God will pay a suitable equivalent in return for goods provided, yeah. services rendered, or losses incurred. He will recompense. He will recomp uh, recompense or compensate, brother, for and make payments to, to whom, pastor? To those who diligently seek him. The phrase diligently seek is from the Greek word which and it means to investigate, to scrutinize, to beg or crave. God rewards the person who craves his presence. God does not reward sleepy-eyed, complacent, non-thinkers, half-interested, worldly-minded, pleaser, or pleasure-seekers. God rewards those who diligently seek Him. Those who diligently seek to know and to follow Him. The idea is that we must earnestly and persevere and endure to the end. So God is a reward. He pays for people who earnestly seek after him. If you want him, he'll pay you. He'll reward you. Can I get an amen? If your Christianity is just casual Christianity, if it's all about, I got my ticket to heaven, I'm going on to glory one day, I'm saved, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, and that's all I want, that's all you're going to get. And for some people, that's enough. I'm happy to be saved. Sanctified. As a matter of fact, I'm overjoyed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. But there are some things in this life that I need from God. And I know that just being saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost is not going to get them for me. And I'm not necessarily talking about material things. There are some spiritual things, emotional things, mental things. There are some physical things that I need. And the only way that I can get them is if I earnestly, diligently seek after Him. Can I get an amen today? And when you go through a bout of depression, yeah. you need a breakthrough. You need to come out of that. Yeah. And, and there are people who try other substances to come out of depression and only to find out the only thing that can bring you out of it is God when you diligently seek after Him. Sometimes you can be so sick and the doctors have given up and, and done all they can do and there's nothing left for them to do and the only person who can heal you now is God. Amen. Amen. God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some things this world cannot offer you, cannot give you, yes. and you can only get it from God. Yeah. Yeah. That's a peace that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. Other than God. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen. He rewards those. Yes, who diligently. Seek him. Christ tells us what it means to. Diligently <laughs> seek God. It means to hunger. And to thirst after righteousness. Yeah. Matthew 5 and 6. Yeah he said. That you will be filled. Uh -huh. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Tells us to seek. And to ask. And to knock. And in Matthew 6 and 33, he tells us to seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. In uh -huh. Matthew 17, 21, he tells us to pray and to fast. That is to persevere in our prayer. And when you diligently seek God, he rewards. So the person who needs something and lives on his face in prayer before God, asking and seeking and knocking, will experience God answering his need. Thus, he will be encouraged to trust God, that is, to seek and to knock even more and more. And a genuine faith in God lives before God. 
That is what faith really is. It's living before God. Faith is entrusting uh, one's life to God. It's trusting God, depending upon God, believing in God, seeking God, conversing with God, sharing with God, and fellowshipping with God. A person who really believes that God exists will do these things. The greater need, the greater amount of time true faith spends alone with God discussing the need. The greater the need, the more diligent true faith seeks the answer to its need. Can you say amen? amen. Mm -hmm. What happens is a person diligently seeks God. He discovers that true faith lives before God in prayer and devotion and is given what it hopes for. Therefore, the person learns to trust God more and more. Yes. And he grows in faith. Right. One thing, however, always needs to be remembered. God is not going to reward sinful, carnal trust. Yeah. Nor is he going to reward doubting trust. Yeah. If he answers doubting trust of carnal hope and prayer, then the doubting and carnal person will begin to think that the life he's living is acceptable to God. Yeah. God does not approve sinful and carnal living, nor does he approve a doubting heart. God honors righteous living and a believing heart. And it's the person who truly lives righteously and believes enough to diligently seek God who grows and grows in faith. Let me read something to you. Write this verse down. Uh, James chapter number 4 and verse number 3. Listen, listen to what James writes. He says, um, James 4 and 3 says, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Yeah. That is, you spend it on your pleasure. Yeah. And I get an amen. Yeah. You spend it on your pleasure. You ask and miss. You know, the person who who prays and seems like their prayers never get asked or get answered oftentimes is because they, they, they don't know how to pray. Yeah. But when you know how to pray because you have spent time with God and spend time in his word, you learn how to pray, and you pray in faith in God, and you pray according to his will, and God answers your prayer. First Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 1 through 3, listen to what Paul writes. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now... You are not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are, where there are envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? So what Paul is talking about is if you're going to grow and grow and grow in faith and grow in, in the Lord and grow spiritually, you can't be carnal Amen. and remain on milk all of your life. Yeah. Now, a, a baby, a, a natural baby has to have milk, yeah. but the child has to be weaned off of the milk. Yeah. Can I get an amen? amen? And start eating solid food if the baby is going to grow amen. and become strong and develop properly. Amen. Same thing in Christianity. You can't remain a baby Christian all your life. We got to grow beyond elementary principles. Can I get an amen? amen. You got to grow. And how do you grow? You grow by spending time in the Word. Yeah. Spending time. We'll get into that here a little bit. Let's, let's go to this part because the, um, I want you to go in your Bibles or you can just write it down if you want to. But I'm going to read Habakkuk chapter number 2. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 4. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. This is what I want to talk about because it says, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Amen. The just shall live by his faith. Four times in the scripture we're told that the just shall live by his faith. Here in Rebecca, as we just read, it's also found in Romans chapter 1 verse 17, Galatians 3 and 11, and Hebrews 10 38. 
The word shall live, kaya in Hebrew, means to live, to stay alive, be preserved, to flourish, to enjoy life, to live in happiness, to breathe, be alive, be animated, recover health, live continuously. The, the fundamental idea is to live and breathe, breathing being the evidence of life in Hebrew concept. A literal rendering of this word would be the righteous person in or by his faithfulness, firmness, consistency, belief, faith, steadfastness shall live. So the just, the righteous shall live by faith. Faith is to be a lifestyle Amen. by every believer. Yes, yes. It is to be a lifestyle. We live by faith. Amen. We live by, everybody say that, we live, we live. By, by faith. faith. Believers live by faith. We live by faith. According to uh, yeah, we live by faith. Our, our life should flourish. We should have a good life, a, a life of consistency. We live by faith. When we talk about living by faith, it, it cannot be sporadic faith. It has to be consistent faith. Because when the scripture says we live by, Living is not sporadic. Living is consistent. You live every day. Can I get an amen? amen? So living by faith means my life or my walk of faith should be consistent. Every day of my life. Not just on Sunday when we're all dressed up in our Sunday's best. Come to church and say all the right things. Too blessed to be cursed. Too blessed to be stressed, yeah. covered by the blood and not by the mud and all that. And then on Monday and the rest of the week, we ain't saying nothing about God. Yeah. Walking by faith is an everyday thing. Let me tell you this, church. Listen to me, please. You don't know what you're going to be faced with from one day to the next. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. Can I get an amen? You don't know what you're going to be faced with. That's why it's so important to have a word in your spirit so that whenever you are faced with challenges in life, you'll know how to deal with it. It may knock you on your knees when you get bad news, but I promise you this, if you got some word down in your spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance what the Lord has said to you. You can get up and walk by faith. Can I get an amen? amen? Let's talk for a minute about the measure of faith. Go over to Romans chapter number 12. Romans chapter number 12. The measure of faith. Listen to what Romans 12 and verse number 3 says. It says, For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Now, according to this verse, God has given every believer the measure of faith. Yeah. That phrase, the measure of faith, tells us something powerful about the Christian walk and how it applies to your life. If you want your faith to grow, if you desire to trust the word of God implicitly, knowing that because of it you can trust God to handle whatever difficulties arise, whether illness, financial distress, unemployment, or whatever else comes your way, then there is good news. As a born-again believer, you have the ability to make that desire a reality. The measure of faith is not saving faith, 
but the faith to receive and exercise the gifts God apportioned us. So we have saving faith. You got to have same faith in order to get saved, first of all. But once a person is saved, God gives you a measure of faith. It's up to you what to do with that measure. Can I get an amen? If you want to stay right where you are as a babe in Christ and not be able to believe God for too much, then God will leave you right there. But his desire for you is that you grow. Is that you grow, that your faith grows, and that you can trust him and believe him for more and more and more. Can I get an amen today? Amen. So faith is for the believer. Yeah. It's important to understand that Romans 12 and 3 and the rest of the book of Romans was written to, it was not written to unbelievers, but it was written to believers, Christians. It was speaking to Christian people who had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Therefore, when it talks about the measure of faith, it's not saying that faith is available to everyone in the world, but rather that it is available to the believer. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 2 supports this statement where it says, And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for not all have faith. So the measure of faith is only given to a believer. A person who has been born again. Unbelievers do not have the measure of faith. And say amen. Remember, this is not saving faith. This is the measure of faith that God gives to every believer so that you can believe him for the things that you need yeah. as you grow and walk by faith. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Now, so, so if, if you're wondering why your unsaved family members or your friends and co-workers can't understand your spiritual walk or is unable to stand with you in faith, you know, with you in healing and deliverance and provision and restitution, understand it's because they haven't received the measure of faith. Okay. Salvation is required for the measure of faith to be present in a person's life. And you, on the other hand, have already received it because Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul says, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have, old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Therefore, you have faith. You have faith. Now let me say this to you. Here's the next thing I want you to get. You have the same faith that Jesus had. Can I get an amen? You have the same faith that Jesus had. Listen, Jesus... 100% God, 100% man, the God man. He came to the earth not to live as God, but he came to the earth to live as a man. Can I get an amen? amen. Came to the earth to live as a man and to show us how to live like God intended for us to live. Show us how to operate in faith just like he operates in faith. To show us, teach us the God kind of faith. Yeah. Can I get an amen? Now, if he would have come here as God and lived amongst us as God, then we couldn't relate to him. But he came and lived as a man to teach us how to live by faith. Yeah. He emptied himself, is what Paul said in, in uh, Philippians chapter 2. He emptied himself. And became a man. man. Came here to live. And he suffered as a man. Can I get an amen? And died on the cross. Amen. So there, there are not different kinds of faith depending on who you are and your role and, and that you play in the body of Christ. And you may see some, you know, some believer uh, who seem to have strong faith, world changing faith. And you may think in your mind, you know, I'll never be able. Be like them. That person is so confident and secure in their spiritual walk. That's just not me. I can't do that. Yeah. And the measure of faith is the same for every believer. And it's the same faith that Jesus possessed. 
and different believers may have developed and strengthened their faith over time and by the word, but their faith is no different than yours. You have that same capability. It's up to you what you do with the faith, the measure of faith that God has given you. He rewards those who do what? Diligently seek Him. If you just want to have a casual relationship with God, then, you know, God, all right, that's, if that's all you want, that's all I give you. But if you want more of God, then the more you want of Him, the more He'll give you of Himself. It's up to you. There was a, a woman that came to Jesus to be healed, and Jesus said, According to your faith, according to your faith, do you have faith to be healed? If you have the faith to be healed, then be it unto you. But if not, you know, if, if you're not, if you don't believe this stuff, man, this preacher up there just saying all of those crazy stuff, I don't believe none of that. No problem. I guarantee you, when you get sick, and you about to die? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gonna call some folks. Will y'all pray for me, please? Back in the name, man. Amen. You get broke. You can't pay your bills. They repossess your car. They foreclose on your house, and you you being put out of your house. Your stuff is on on the front yard and all that kind of stuff. And the marshals have come, and you know. You're going to call on God for something. I promise you that. What I'm trying to help you to get is how to walk by faith and be able to trust God through all of that stuff. All of it. Because there are things that happen in life. And if you have been walking by faith, you can address it, you can confront it, you can deal with it, and you can come out victoriously on the other side. Can I give an amen? Now, only you can build your faith. Yes, only you can build your faith. The measure of faith that is developed and strengthened in you comes from one place. Yeah. And that's the word of God. Write down Romans 10 17. Most of y'all know that. It tells us, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by what? Hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. It does not come by having heard, but it comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I told y'all when we were at St. Agnes, and they had tape ministry, cassette tapes, and I still have tons of cassette tapes that when I first got saved, you know, I would get a tape after every service, whether it was on Sunday morning, if it was on Tuesday night, if it was doing Faith Explosion Conference, I'd get tapes, yeah. and I'd listen to the tapes on my way to work, uh -huh. and I'd listen to the tapes on my way home from work. Every day, the Word, I'd get the Word on the inside of me, and that's how my faith grew. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Your faith grows. It comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It doesn't come by, you know, um osmosis it, ain't to, it doesn't just happen you have to initiate this thing you got to position yourself in a place where you can hear and hear and hear and hear the word and you shouldn't just wait until Sunday or Wednesday night to hear it needs to be heard every day of your life. Can I get an amen today? All right. The word of God is food for your spirit. Unless you're fasting, you don't starve yourself physically, do you? A physical food. Some of y'all sitting up in here now, your stomachs are growling just because I said food. And, and you wait, man, I be glad that he gonna finish because I'm thought to get home. And you wanna eat something, am I right? <laughs> you wanna eat. 
And you feed yourself physically every day. Every day. Because you want to eat. Your body craves food. And that's how you stay healthy physically. And you get nourished physically because of the physical food that you eat every day. That if you feed yourself physically every day to stay healthy and strong physically, how much more do you think you need to do the same thing spiritually with your spirit man every day of your life? You need to be eating some word. You need to eat some word. You need to take in some word. Can I get an amen? Take it in. Get it in some kind of way. And, and like I said, after services, I used to get the tape. I still got some tape. You know, in my garage and those crates and stuff. I don't have a cassette player no more. And uh, I play them cassettes so much that y'all play the cassette so much that it just said, you know what, I'm done, man. I'm done. I'm not. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. You done wore me out. I used to wear them out. So, 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 um, now, hearing the word, hearing the word of God is a way to achieve strength, the strength of faith that you desire. And along with studying the word yourself, you, you can listen to more mature believers People who have actually experienced the power of God. Listen to them teach. Teach you about faith and the word by listening to CDs and get DVDs and, you know, true faith teachers on the radio or podcasts. And whenever you make the teaching of the word available, whenever we make it available to you, you ought to get it. Amen? Uh, yeah, you should get it. And uh, make the extra effort to get it. And these are these are important tools for immersing yourself in the word and learning how to interpret and apply the word correctly. And in time, your faith will begin to strengthen and you'll stir up the measure of faith that you've received and you won't have to receive or achieve more faith. You'll simply develop the faith that you were given at salvation. Don't let anyone, whether they're fellow believers, the enemy, or even your own mind, convince you that you have weak or non-existent faith. That's a lie. Amen. That if you believe it, you will keep, it will keep you weak. If you believe what they tell you, it will keep you weak and it will keep you ineffective as a Christian. If you become a new creation in Christ Jesus, then you have the measure of faith like Jesus uh, your faith has the ability to move mountains. It simply needs to be exercised. And you need to make the quality decision right now to read and to study the word. Learn to apply it. Watch how other believers who have walked by faith and have trusted God, watch them as an example. You see how they will stand on the word of God. They speak the word of God. They walk by faith. They're not moved by what they see, but they're moved by what they believe. See their example and learn how to walk in faith like them. Can I get an amen? Now let me work to a close here. Let me close. Because according to Jesus, in Matthew 17 and 20, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can and should have the mountain-moving faith of God. Yeah. The gift of God's faith was given to you to keep. It resides within your spirit. And it is there being developed and used in your daily life. Remember what Hebrews 10.38 says, Now the just shall live by faith. God has given you this powerful faith to sustain you in this life. And it's so powerful that even a measure as small as a mustard seed can pluck up a mountain and cast it into the sea. The measure of faith you receive is enough to do whatever it is called upon to do. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. God is a faith being. You are born of him. You are a faith being. God does not do anything outside of faith. 
with his faith living in you, you are to operate in the same way. Remember what the scripture says in Hebrews 11 and 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Yeah. He who comes to God must believe that he is and that he rewards those who diligently seek yeah. him. Yeah. We cannot please God without faith. Amen. I gotta trust God yes. for everything. Yes. I gotta stand on his word for everything. I have to believe him for my healing. I have to believe him for my deliverance. I have to believe God for my finances. I have to believe God to hold my family together. If my family falls apart, I got to believe God to hold my mind together. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? God has given you the measure of faith. And this measure of faith that you have given is for you to take and to develop it so that when you are faced with these challenges in life, that you'll be able to stand. Amen. The difference between people who are saved and people who are not saved. I always say this, is that when you're saved, you have a coping mechanism. No matter what you go through in life, you'll be able to deal with it. And I mean that. Whatever you go through, you'll be able to deal with it because you have a coping mechanism, and that's the person of Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And you have his word. You have his word. You have the word deposited within you. But you got to take this. You got to take this every day of your life. And you got to make some time in your busy schedule to read this. I'm, can I tell y'all what I do sometimes now? I got one of those smartphones, and I can connect it to my the auxiliary thing in my car. And I can pull up my Bible app and just listen to Scripture. Or I have the Bible on CD. And I can pop in CDs and listen to nothing but the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So instead of, instead of popping in Luther Vandross first, <laughs> pop in word. Can I get an amen? <laughs> instead of popping in the yin yang gang or whatever they call them. What, what's the name of them? Who? The who? I knew somebody would know. <laughs> Let's stand to our feet, church. Pop in some word. Get some word. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Is it the Yang Yang twins? Anybody want to unite with the church? Come on down to the front. Come on down to the front. If you want to become a member of this church, come on down. Glory to God. Come on, amen. Come on, yeah. All right. Good night, sister. Thank you for your talk. Have a seat right here. Yeah. Come on, let's worship God today. Let's worship Him today.
you quickly if you're in the house this morning or if you're watching on the live stream and you cannot honestly say, Bishop Hines, I know I'm saved. I know if I die today, if I die tomorrow, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I'm going to heaven to be with the Lord. Now, if you can't say that with confidence and assurance, then I want to give you an opportunity this morning to be saved and to know that you're saved. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 6 and 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 10 verses 9 and 10 say that if you would confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and verse 9 say, For by grace are you saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God not by works, lest any man should boast. We're not saved because we're good. We're not saved because we get it right all the time. We don't always get it right. We're not always as good as we should be. But God loved us. Sent Jesus to die for us. And on the third day morning, he raised him from the dead and he has seated him at his own right hand. So if you're in here today or you're watching on the live stream, and you want to be saved, I'm going to lead you in a word of prayer. I'll ask everyone if you would please bow your heads. You want to be saved, just repeat this prayer. Just meet it with all of your heart, and God will save you from your sins today. Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins, and I turn away from them. And I turn my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son. But he died for all of my sins, and you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me, guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this saved life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me the overflowing measures. Give me the ability to speak in other tongues and the power to bear witness of you. By faith, I receive the Holy Ghost. By faith, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. By faith, I have the tongues and I have the power. Thank you for filling me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer and you meant it with all of your heart, God saved you from your sins. He filled you with his spirit and he's given you a brand new life in him, his very own life, eternal life. The next thing you should do, if you're not already a member of a good Bible teaching church, I encourage you, find a good Bible teaching church, unite with that church, and become a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then out of your obedience to him, be baptized. And if you live in this zip code, 77089, or 075, or 034, you're close to New Covenant. You ought to come and join this church. We're a great Bible teaching church, and we'd love to have you as a member. Amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. You all can be seated. We all say just a little bit more that. Just a little bit more. We're going to receive our new member on today. Amen?
I, I, I want to say to you, I thank God, because I know you've been visiting with us for a minute, amen, and uh, I'm glad that God put it on your heart to unite with us and become a part of the New Covenant family, and we welcome you as a member of the New Covenant Christian Church, amen, glory to God, glory to God, for all of our new members, we have a new members class, and uh, it's on Sunday mornings. It'll be at eight o'clock now. I almost said nine forty-five. That was kind of used to it. But, but at eight o'clock in the back of the church, one of our ministers, they will take you through our new members class. Amen. And uh, we ask that you attend three of them, and they'll just explain to you our vision, our doctrinal statement, what we, you know, our expectation statement of our church. Once you finish that, I want you to find your place to serve God here in your covenant, all right? Because this is now your church home with your church family, and I want you to feel comfortable and serve God when it's here, okay? All right, God bless you, my brother. Amen. Y'all give Brother Timothy a hand. Uh, brother Christopher, will you take Brother Timothy's picture? Amen. Brother Chris is going to take your picture. And next Sunday, you're going to see your picture up in that case out there. All right? Glory to God. Amen. You come right on back here. All right. We're going to get ready to do the announcements. After we do the announcements, we're going to bring the tithe and the offering to the Lord, and then we're going to be done for the day. If you need an offering in the Lord, raise your hand. We'll get one to your ASAP. If you need to swipe your card for the tithe, the offering, the building funds, special offering, just fill out one of the regular envelopes. When we dismiss, go to nursery number two. Someone will meet you over there to swipe your card. If you need to swipe it for the scholarship fund, raise your hand and we'll get a special envelope for you. Just do the same thing. Fill it out. Go to nursery number two. Um, first time visitors, if y'all don't mind, when we dismiss, can y'all just step right across the hall to the library? I just want to shake your hand and put something in it on your way.